Right, good evening everybody and welcome to the second round of the Underground Racing Series. This is a monthly series and we're going to take teams from the top 50 ranking in Zwift Power. Tonight we're in New York and we're on the Lady Liberty course with a slight extension to the course. So it's not the usual finish on the Liber Lady Liberty course. We're going to finish a little bit further, about two kilometers, two and a half kilometers past the normal finish line, which does add a little bit of a drag onto the finish line as there as well. And hopefully this time we'll see a straight run through and we'll get the correct course for the racers. This evening we are joined by my co-commentator, which is Kevin O'Pelly. Kevin is the team owner and team manager of NZ Bro. Good evening, or should I say good morning, Kevin? Yeah, good morning, Cy. Si. Great to be here this time. It was great to watch last week. Um, or last month, I should say. So looking forward to this race. There's some great riders in there, and I think we're going to have some early action. And if they do manage to stay together through the KOM, there's definitely going to be a few riding off the front. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. So let, having said that, let's jump straight in and take a look at the course before we jump into the action. So as I said, yes, this is the New York Lady Liberty course. And as you can see on screen there, we are going to take in the New York Com reverse so not very long kevin it just a kilometer but it, it pinches up in places yeah it does and um i think it's an opportunity for those stronger riders the, the 20 minute power guys good strong five minute powers to really push the pace here and look for a breakaway opportunity and i think team tactics are going to come into play to see who's going to be the first team to chase those individual riders that go for that long range attack yeah, absolutely. And if you remember on uh, the last month's course, which uh, was in Watopia, we had a few breakaway riders. And in fact, I think if I remember rightly, it was one of your riders who took the overall win, Tabalon, if I remember rightly. Yeah, correct. So um, a couple of attacks and early chases and the old one, two seemed to work. So I think a, a few teams like to try that tactics and I'm pretty sure uh, we'll see BL13 pushing a few riders off early. Yeah, I think uh, it, BL13 were probably feeling a little bit sore, I think, after week one because they had a very strong team but got caught out by NZ Bro and Team Mutant last time. So here's a quick look at the results from last last time. So we had Tabalong taking the win uh, and the Mutant rider Cuba also taking second with Thomas Berry from BL13 riding out. But I think it was the fact that NZ Bro Mutant had three or four riders in the top 10 each, which stacked out. And I think it was Mutant who were leading the team standings with NZ Bro in second place. So having said that, let's have a quick look at today's riders. So we've got four riders from BL13, NZ Bro a full field of six, NZ, uh, NZ Bro also fielding a full rider roster of six riders. Sisu, we've got three riders this evening and we have one DS in the pen with Matt. And let's jump straight into the action with the riders on course. So we're just leaving the pens now. As I said, 15 kilometer course. It's about a kilometer and a half till we reach this first climb. And at the moment, we're on board with Foreshaw from Electric Spirit. Electric Spirit, a new team this week. In fact, Kevin, I, uh, I think I said that Daz Carter wasn't going to be racing this time, but I can see him rolling out of the pen with BL13. <laughs> so it looks like BL13 yes, do indeed. have five riders this evening. They do, which will make it very, very interesting. So uh, I'd be surprised if there isn't an early push here, um, but I think the wattage from the guys will stay pretty high and we'll probably have a tight bunch until that, that first KOM opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty cagey at this point. Yeah, there's some, there's some interesting riders in here. I think um, Team Tim Humpton from Electric Spirit is probably a rider to watch. He's He goes pretty good. Um, so he's got a 400 watt 20 minute. So he can certainly go for a long range and hold that too. So if he gets the opportunity, um, he's one that certainly could push out by himself. And if he's joined by anyone else, it'll certainly make it interesting. Well, I think we both know there's one rider in particular for BL13 who uh, doesn't like to wait for a sprint and likes to get involved in the action early. And that is uh, Michael Gamst himself. Absolutely got a reputation for himself now for pushing the pace early. But let's see what happens at the moment. Still pretty cagey, all riders together. Exactly. And um, some of these guys will be doing back-to-backs too in the one day with the, the Zwift Racing League finals as well. So... 
yeah, the guys like to freshen the legs up, obviously, on the same day as, as racing finals, which is great to see. Yeah, I'm not sure what that timing looks like where you are, Kevin, but uh, I guess it's pretty early there now. So when when will the NZ Bro teams be racing the finals? Uh, so pretty much in 13 hours. So they'll be uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably going for a, a siesta later on this afternoon. And it looks like we've got to push off the front here just as we're talking. Yeah, now I have to admit, this was one of the BZR riders who is guesting for a team, but I have to say the teams have not informed me of which team he is guesting for. But absolutely pushing almost six watts a kilo off the front here. Seven watts a kilo and taking the gap out to two seconds already. And still no action from the Peloton, so no one's decided to chase just yet which is interesting yeah but we're just about to take this right hand turn onto the foot of this com that we have here so it is a little bit of a wait until it kicks up until we turn right again and really then the pitch does start to go up a bit we're still up to five six seven percent currently and we've got ben ruth from nz bro looking to bridge across that gap pushing 500 watts it's, uh... Yeah, Ben, absolutely no slouch there at 5.7 watts a kilo, 20-minute power as well. Rolling straight over the top there. And again, immediately we're seeing some action from Gamst on that wheel. I said it would happen, and it has. So we've got Ruth and Gamst just pushing the pace. Six and seven watts a kilo, while the rest of the riders are sitting at five to five and a half watts a kilo. It's going to be really interesting how much action we see here, because it's quite a short race at 15 kilometers. I am hoping that we see a few riders off the front, Kevin, early on this climb, and then uh, we'll see some kind of red-hot chase after. Oh, exactly, and if Ben and, and um, Gamps get away together, that's probably not a good combination for everybody else to try and chase down. No, absolutely, and uh, yeah, looking at Ben's numbers, a fantastic 20-minute power, but his sprint is a little bit behind some of the other riders, so I guess what, this is why he's going off the front early. I say a little bit behind the others, 13 watts a kilo is absolutely no slouch of a sprint, I could say. Yeah, was, ZRL was the same. Um, he pushes the long range and, and tries to tries to hurt the sprinters, which obviously you've got to work to what your strengths are. So there's no surprising here that uh, Ben's going off the front and, and trying to do that exact thing. And, well, um, it's, uh, it seems to be working. Yeah, just, just look at this line of riders that we've got here immediately. A long, long line of riders. Four, six, and eight seconds to that rear rider there. And again, we have Gamst and Tabalong also from NZ Bro. I had the uh, displeasure of racing with Tabalong on one of the recon races before the fi the semi-finals the other week. And uh, I got dropped in the... Uh, I was lucky to hang on until the final set of S's and then got well and truly dumped out of the lead group thanks to an attack from Tabalon, so appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be the first rider, so... <laughs> well, we've got a, a strong group of seven riders here with Ruth, Young, Gamst, Humpton, and Daniel Mundell, also from BL13. Just tagging onto the back of this group, we can see two BL13, a single mutant rider, and two NZ Bro riders, obviously with Ruth and Tabalon. And I think I can see an electric spirit rider in there as well. Let's have a look at this electric spirit rider. And there's the feathers being dropped for those lucky enough to get them. Absolutely. So this front group of six riders now have extended this lead to five seconds. It's going to be interesting on again, such a short course and such a small number of riders. We're looking at 27 riders in this event today. So again, a group of six has a really good chance of staying off the front, off the top of this climb. And again, yeah, if we... It'll be interesting, be interesting to see if Tom Berry can get himself across here. He's, he's pushing the big numbers. Um, him and um, Pete Mogg really pushing hard to try and get back into this front group. Yeah, it's interesting. We've got a five second gap, but we are almost over the top of this climb here. And again, it's interesting that Berry is doing this because effectively at the moment, it looks like... He's just dragging the rest of the riders up to his teammates up the road currently with Mundell and Gamst. Let's see how they're doing at the front. So again, Ruth just pulling himself back up to these four leading riders. 
And we've got Cuba from meeting Daniel Mundell from BL13. Ruth getting across to that front group again. Young also there, James Young from Mutants. And we've got uh, Tim Humpton trying to bridge the gap in between. So he's stuck in no man's land at the moment. And being a single rider on this downhill is probably not a great great opportunity for him to try and bridge this gap either. No, and this gap has gone out to 10 seconds. And as you say, with Humpton trying to be, or trying to close that gap in the middle. So we've got some strong riders here. I mentioned James Young from Mutant here. Again, a 15 watts per kilogram sprint on james 72 kilograms there he's noted down as a veteran rider so we've got six riders out in front two bl13 i think i see two from mutant and two from nz bro so again the three teams that we see battling it out last month were seen here again this month remember these races run the third friday of every month if you would like to get involved in the underground racing team, I said it is open to the top 50 ranked teams according to Zwift Power. Then drop myself or Kevin a message and we'll try and get you amongst the action next month. And yeah, we've got Joe Endersby from um, Electric Spirit in this front group too. And um, <clears throat> he's in pretty good form finishing second in the ZRL. So he's certainly got some good form at the moment, which is the reason why he's in that front group. Yeah, and I'm sure he's going to be called upon tomorrow as well to act. So a bit of a short recovery in between the Underground Racing Series and the, the WTRL Finals. So again, I'm just on board with Tabalon at the minute. Let's take a quick look at Tabalon's race results recently. We've got Gab pushing off the front again, trying trying to force the pain on everyone else, which is great to see. Absolutely, so we're already six and a half kilometers into this 15 kilometer race here. Yeah, we can see some of these riders also took part in the WTRL time trial yesterday. I think I saw a bit of an update from the NZ Bro team yesterday with some success, if I remember rightly, Kevin. Yeah, so we, um, our Doppio crew, Pika Pikas, took out um, took out the fastest time so they didn't quite beat their course record which they held previously um but yeah a very good time by the guys so that's good to see and also our female team also got a course record yesterday as well um i think we took three podiums in the different divisions and also second a couple of seconds and a third so pretty successful uh, week for the team which is really good yeah and i think it's uh, it's good to mention here that we are going to be having a women's underground lace a ladies underground racing league next month as well with a few standout teams already marked down to get involved yeah which will be great um opportunity for the ladies to get in and smash it like the guys are at the moment and have a, a bit more fun in the technical racing and some tactical options Absolutely. So we're just starting to see this gap come down, come down a little bit here. And interestingly, it's Stephen Corbin from Sisu Racing, who's doing a lot of work on the front here. And I have to say pretty successfully because this group has come back from 10 seconds down to five and six seconds. And I think uh, Electric Spirit also getting involved in the chase. And if I look at where we're at on the road at the minute. So as I said, we've got Mog in here. We've got Tabalon here as well. Ruth Mundell off the front. And then there's a chasing group made up of Forshaw from Electric Spirit, George Whitlock from Mutant, Tim Humpton also from Electric Spirit, Chris Stevenson, Stephen Kenny, and Stephen Corbin from CISU have the said in this chase group. Yeah, that chase group's getting pretty close. So if this front group doesn't really push the pace, they might actually get caught here before the finish. Yeah, we're eight kilometers in. So we're over the halfway mark now. We're well into the final seven kilometers of this race. And we're currently riding with the second group. Interesting again to see BL13 just on the front. I think if I was them, I'd just be sitting in, saving my legs and waiting to pick up those top spots out of this second group. And again, I think we can see this gap has gone out again now to 10 seconds. 
here we've got Gamps of pushing the pace again with Young from Newton. So just trying to force the pace again, just pushed out to a one second gap, which the, the other riders aren't having. So that's been brought back together again. But all these wee surges are obviously working for them and, and keeping that space between the two groups. Yeah, as I look at this now, it looks like we've got actually three NZ Bro riders in this front group with Tabalong, Ruth, and also Lichwark. Is it Jan Lichwark also in this front group? So three riders now represented from NZ Bro in this lead group with the chasers now going out to 12 seconds. So this gap is absolutely extending here as we make this descent, get a little bit of recovery unless we're going to see one of the riders push off the front as we head up the other side. This New York course is known for being up and down. It's, I have to confess, it's one of the uh, my least favourite courses. As we see Michael Gamps once again going out to 12 watts a kilo here and pushing off the front with Ruth NZ Bro chasing at 6 watts a kilo. BL13 again just happy to follow wheels in the chase. And it's NZ yeah. Bro taking up the action with both Ruth and Tabalon on the front trying to pull Michael Gamps back here. And that's clever. I mean, NZ Bro with the, the riders in that front group, it's up to them to chase if they want to and, and smart moves by the other teams yeah. by letting them do it. Absolutely. Well, as we look at this now, we've got three BL13 riders and three NZ Bro and just the single rider from Newton. Unless we can figure out this guest rider, which I guess... In fact, I think... Yeah, absolutely. Three NZ Bro, three BL13, and just the two riders here from Mutant, which is James Young. And we have Huber Standaski from Mutant Racing. Again, Cuba, also a popular figure, and seeing have some fantastic results in the Zwift Racing League so far this year. But it's all come back together. Gump's taking a little bit of recovery. Before, once again, I'm sure we will see another tack in this final five kilometers. Let's uh, exactly, have... there'll be someone with itchy feet will be <laughs> thinking about taking that long range attack. And we see Thomas Berry here trying to make the junction. He's jumped away from the chase group here, as we can see. Got an eight second gap on the chasing group with the Sisu Riders. And he's up there at 11 watts a kilo. And he's got a good chance that he might make the junction here before we go into the finish. And that will be four BL13 riders should he get there in this front group. And again, with three from NZ Bro and just two from Mutant. So BL30 packing the numbers up front here, trying to make up from that week one. And I think Cuba's on to that. So he's gone on the attack. Yeah, he, absolutely. He he doesn't want another one joining, so he's forcing the pace and just making it a little bit harder for that, that bridge to happen. Clever move there from Gamps, just drifting to the back, slowing the pace down a little bit at the back, just extending that line and giving chance for Berry to jump on the back of the group here. This is Thomas Berry. Let's have a look where we are with the front. So a few small gaps opening up, but I would say we're all back together. Let's take a look. So it's Daniel Mundell on the front. Cuba for Mutant and second. Tabalon currently sitting third. Ruth, Young, Pete Mogg also representing BL13. Gams and Thomas Berry just making that junction there across. So four again from BL13 making this front group. And we're out to 17 seconds of the chasing group with Sisu and Electric Spirit. Really interesting finish we're going to have here. So where is your money in terms of the sprint finish here? Oh, she's hard to say. I think with a, such a small group, um, I, I think it can be down to timing for this group. Um, so, yeah, it'll, it'll be quite interesting. I, I think it's a flip of the coin for quite a few riders here, and it wouldn't surprise me to see a long-range attack um, Absolutely, go We're, again. We are approaching now the final three kilometres of this race. If I look at the numbers, actually, in terms of their 15-second power, I have to say they are all pretty balanced and they are all hitters. There's one rider that stands out, which is 16.9 watts a kilo of Thomas Berry from BL13. But he's just done a huge effort to get across to this group. Yeah, I... Knowing BL13's race tactics, they're quite smart. So I think one of them will probably go and force the others to chase. And um, 
yeah, just put the pressure on the other guys to try and weaken them a bit before that sprint. Absolutely. If I was to put money on anyone doing that move, I think it would be Michael Gamps has a reputation for taking that early run at the finish and just drawing out the chase, I think, from NZ Bro and Mutant here. And we're getting again into the final two and a half kilometers. You can see we've just passed through the standard start finish line now. And these riders are going to be thinking about saving their legs, sitting in those wheels, or making that launch early. So just over two kilometers to go. And we just get a little bit draggy as we approach the finish line. We're looking out for one of those virtual banners here. Let's jump on board with one of the NZ Bro Riders, and this is Jan Lichwark here. And does yeah, Jan... the pace is really eased up, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This <laughs> is why I think we are absolutely going to see some moves here as we see Tabalong just moving up to 8 watts a kilo, just testing the legs of the other riders. Not a really explosive launch off the front, but we're now we're starting to see an increase here. 10 watts a kilo, 9 watts a kilo from Mundell. And again, we've got Tavalon just sat on the front, along with Cuba from Mutant. And Ben Ruth pushing straight through there. Rolling straight over the top, but Cuba from Mutant, Standaski straight on that wheel there with Dun Daniel Mundell also sitting on the wheel. But again, I think it's up to NZ Bro and Mutant to make the first move here. We're going to again see Tabalong roll over the top with one of those 8 watts a kilo, 10 watts a kilo moves. But again, Cuba Stanaski from Mutant straight onto it with Daniel Mundell also reacting and getting onto that wheel. But we're starting to see a reaction from the rest of the riders here. Oh, and Adele dropped the era at the perfect time there to get a one second gap, but I don't think that's holdable. No, absolutely. We're into the final kilometer. We got Tabalong on the front, eight and a half kilometers. Kuba Stanadski from Mutant, second wheel chasing, continuing to chase Tabalong. Daniel Mundell still sitting third, trying to close this gap. We are seeing a couple of riders. Michael Gamps just one second off the back. Thomas Berry, surprisingly, also off the back here. So this work from NZ Bro and Mutant, reducing the numbers for BL13. So for BL13, we've got Daniel Mundell. And we've also, ah, no, it is Michael Gamps also still sat here from BL13. Oh, here we go, up the KO, and they're really pushing the power on now. So we've got 500 meters to the finish, and it's Tabalon at 11 watts a kilo, continuing to be riding on the front and pushing the pace with Kuba Sandatsky from Mutant. Again, chasing. We're seeing the same top two riders at the front of the race and it is Tabalong who looks like he has this in the bag now 8 watts a kilo with 200 meters to go James Young from Mutant chasing hard from Mutant Daniel Mundell still sitting third Daniel Mundell he's going to get across the line across to Young oh this is going to be close the final 400 meters this gap is coming down we can see Tabalong has reduced his pace and we have finished the ride. Let's jump across and see if we can take a look at those finishing results. Oh, and it come down to the climbing the climbing power at the end there. Great Absolutely. race to finish. That was a, a fantastic race. Some fantastic tactical moves there with BL13 eventually getting four riders there in that group. But interestingly, seeing two of those riders just reduce and move off the back i think in the end they were five seconds adrift of that lead group so we're just going to wait here and see the results hopefully filter through to swift power what a fantastic dead, race dead right there side the the bridging across there that really hurt at the end for berry burnt a couple of matches just at the wrong time unfortunately didn't have time to recover and um, as soon as that percentage went up at the end there just couldn't light another match to stay with the front guys yeah i think it was um i mean i would say this because i selected the course of course but i, I do really like these courses where you get a climb early on so these these climbers these diesel engines get a chance to hit out a little bit early and then it's up to the teams to chase for those who want to do and we saw the chase coming from electric spirit and sisu 
but there was just too much firepower in that front group of seven riders to close that down. And I think you're right. It was it was interesting that we we didn't see Berry make that front group early on, but he obviously paid for that effort to get across in that race. And again, as soon as we hit that climb, as you say, Kevin, it uh, it had that impact. Yeah, and that's that's great with the course selection making teams think about who's going to do what, how they're going to approach it, and you might not see the top riders from each team put them there based on the course selection too, so based on their, their one 5 minute and 20 minute power, obviously each course is going to suit different riders from each team, so we could see different riders each week as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was interesting to see Tabalon in the mix again though, because of course he took the victory uh, last month with this race. Now, the next event is Friday the 24th of June. And again, British summertime, that is 7.15 in the evening. And it's the Innsbruck Ring. We've got two laps, so 18 kilometers of the Innsbruck Ring. So the infamous leg snapper on that particular course. But of course, that is a shorter, snappier climb. And I would expect the majority of the riders that we see in the event tonight if we see these riders take up round three, of course, because it is up to the team to select whichever riders they want from their team in terms of this monthly series. But that Innsbruck ring, a really interesting course, I think, Kevin. Yeah, it is. And it's always been one of those courses where you think it'll really split up on that KOM or the old leg snapper. So um, I think it'll be very tactical prior to that to how much pressure they actually put on those, those climbers. So the likes of Adele, uh, who's really good at climbing. I'm, I'm guessing other teams are going to have to really put him under the pump on the flatter sections and, and get him to burn a couple of his matches prior to those climbs. Yeah, absolutely. So again, if you want to get involved in the Underground Racing Series, drop myself or Kevin a message either via social media or you can actually email me, simon at levelvelo. .cc. Now, we will hopefully get some results through soon. But here we go. We've got the results, I am pleased to say. Let's flick over to the results screen and we can take a look at the results here. So indeed, it was Adil Tabalon taking the victory in average watts kilo 5.3. What an event. So again, 20 minutes, but that is an impressive watts a kilo to be putting out there. James Young in second place from Mutant. BL13, again, third position with Daniel Mundell and fourth with Michael Gamps. NZ Bro also picking up fifth. So two riders there from NZ Bro in the top five. Two riders from BL13. And again, Mutant picking up sixth place with Cuba Standatsky also in the top six. Rounding out the top ten, we've got Jan Lichwak from NZ Bro. We got Peter Mark also from BL13 and Daryl Carter, Daz Carter from BL13 and Stephen Kenny again from Mutant. So NZ Bro on this occasion, not having the volume of riders that they had, but again taking the top spot there, Kevin. Yeah, which is um, which is great, obviously for me, but for me, for me NZ Bro. So yeah, great to see the guys put out another good performance, and um, yeah, some some. Pretty strong competition there, obviously, with you guys coming into um, into your summer season um, and us coming into winter. Um, so it probably suits us really well with a lot more riding indoors than outdoors. So I don't expect us to um, to always have our way, which will which will be great. And obviously, these courses make it very tactical. So um, you can never count your chickens, obviously. And I'm sure we'll um, yeah we'll be pushed each race. Uh, especially from now on, and I don't think Adil's going to have his own way. I think he'll be a marked man from now on. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, two victories on the bounce, and there's going to be some following and watching of wheels there, I believe. Let's just have a look if we can have a look. Have a look, have a look at the team standings. crashed yet I don't think yeah that's 
not updated yet, but uh, yeah, that might take a little bit longer, but we can add that in. I'll add those as overlays at some point. Right, what we'll do then, let me just flip back, Kevin, and then yep. we'll just do a, a round up and a, and a close. Let me just get your camera back on. So that's it. That's the results, Kevin. I think a great evening of races. I'm looking forward to the next stage. Thank you for joining me as co-commentator. I have to say it's much easier with two commentators and also with your knowledge of Zwift, the riders and the team. So thank you very much. Uh, NZ Bro and the finals tomorrow. How many teams have you got racing tomorrow? Oh, to be honest, I couldn't tell you. There's, there's that many riders, ones, twos and threes. Um, 3 a.m. start, so yeah, whether whether guys get up for those, it's it's hard to say. Um, yeah, the motivation to get up at 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> very small at the moment uh, for a lot of people, um, and yeah, I'd yeah. say probably half a dozen teams probably racing in the cup. Um, so yeah, the 9 p.m. time slot tonight suits uh, most of our teams, but a lot of them are racing in the EM EA series, so that's the 3 a.m. time slot. So. Yeah, I would say very minimal um, <laughs> at that time of the morning. But uh, yeah, the teams that are competing, they'll be looking forward to it. But do join us again next time, Friday the 24th of June for the Underground Racing Series. Have a great evening and a great day from myself and Kevin.